Live from London, I'm Kasia Madeira. This is BBC News. Israel continues to issue mass evacuation orders to Palestinians as airstrikes on the Gaza Strip rage on. Meanwhile, the Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has died in Gaza. This was one of the most controversial Eurovision song contests. Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. The World Food Programme says flooding in Afghanistan has killed more than 300 people since Friday. This is the scene live in Barcelona where people are voting in regional elections. Voting has begun in Catalonia where uh, nationalist parties are hoping to hang on to their majority in the regional assembly. Hello and welcome. We start with Israel, which has continued its airstrikes on several parts of the Gaza Strip, even as it continues issuing controversial evacuation orders to Palestinians. The Israeli military has said its troops had found many tunnels used by Hamas at the Rafa crossing into Egypt. Paul, as always, thank you very much for bringing us up to date on all of those aspects there. Paul Adams, our diplomatic correspondent, live from Jerusalem. And as always, for much more on this story, also the background, just visit the BBC News app. You can also go to the website for regular updates. Well, at the Eurovision Song Contest final, pro-Palestinian protesters have clashed with police over Israel's participation and the Israeli entrant Eden Golan was booed at the Malmö Arena in Sweden. The build-up to the show also saw the Dutch entry disqualified for a backstage incident, but ultimately Switzerland were crowned the winners of this year's competition, one of the most controversial song contests of recent times. Our arts correspondent David Silito reports from... Well, at least some things don't change when it comes to Eurovision. Charlotte Gallagher in Malmo, thank you very much. Of course, lots more on our website about that. And you can see some of the uh, extraordinary images and all the uh, different costumes as well. Now, let's bring you up to date with some of the day's other news stories. More than 4,000 people have been evacuated in Ukraine's Kharkiv region, where President Zelensky has said that his troops are conducting counterattacks for a second day. But he's admitted defense operations are also continuing, given ongoing Russian advances. He said that elsewhere in the eastern Donetsk region, the situation was extremely difficult. Thousands of Canadians have been ordered to leave their homes at Fort Nelson in the province of British Columbia, which is under threat from a wildfire. The blaze began on Friday and was described by officials as exhibiting extreme fire behaviour. Wildfires have also led to evacuation alerts in the neighbouring province of Alberta. Lithuanians vote in presidential elections today with the main candidates all agreed that defence spending should be boosted amid fears about Russia's intentions in the region. Some in the small, mainly Catholic Baltic state on NATO's eastern flank fear that they could be next in Moscow's sights after Ukraine. Well, let's turn to another election. Voting is underway in Catalonia, where pro-independence supporters wanting to break away from Spain are hoping to maintain their majority in the regional parliament. Catalonia made a failed attempt to break away from Spain in 2017, and the election comes as the parliament in Madrid is expected to approve a controversial amnesty law for separatist Catalans facing legal action. 
Do stay with us. I'm back in just a few minutes' time. You're watching BBC News. Welcome, you're watching BBC News. I'm Kasia Madeira. Our main headlines. Israel continues to issue mass evacuation orders to Palestinians as airstrikes on the Gaza Strip rage on. Meanwhile, the Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British-Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has been killed in Gaza. The World Food Program says that flooding in Afghanistan has killed more than 300 people since Friday. The Taliban authorities say that dozens are still missing. It is Switzerland! And after one of the most controversial Eurovision song contests, Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. The singer Nemo triumphed with the song The Code, ahead of Croatia in second place, and Ukraine in third. And this is the scene live in Barcelona, where people are voting in regional elections. Israel has launched further airstrikes on the Gaza Strip early in the morning. Palestinian officials say that two doctors were killed in the central city of Deir al-Bala. Well, let's have a look at the live image. This is of the Israel-Gaza border. Israel has told tens of thousands more Palestinians to leave Rasa as it intensifies military operations in southern Gaza. Well, Palestinian officials say that two doctors were killed in the central city of Deir al-Bala. More than 30 civilian deaths were reported on Saturday. Now, just some breaking news to bring you from Russia. This is the Belgorod uh, city, which is not far from Kharkiv in Ukraine. The MASH Telegram channel is saying that three people have been killed in a collapsed apartment block in the Russian city. Any details, of course, we'll bring them to you. You're watching BBC News. Live from London, I'm Kasia Madeira. This is BBC News. Israel has carried out fresh strikes on several parts of Gaza as it tells Palestinians to leave part of the southern city of Rafah. The UK Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British-Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has been killed in Gaza. The UN says more than 300 people have died in flooding in northern Afghanistan as relief efforts are stepped up. Voting's underway in Catalonia, where pro-independent supporters wanting to break away from Spain are hoping to maintain their majority in the regional parliament. It is Switzerland! And after one of the most controversial Eurovision song contests, Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. Hello and welcome. Israel has continued its airstrikes on several parts of the Gaza Strip, even as it continues issuing controversial evacuation orders to Palestinians. The Israeli military said its troops had found many tunnels used by Hamas at the Rafah crossing into Egypt. Paul Adams there, our diplomatic correspondent in Jerusalem. Well, many parents in Gaza are waiting to get their children out of the Strip for medical treatment. Israeli forces continue to control the Rafah crossing, halting travel and humanitarian access to the Strip. Ru Abbas reports 
reports on the case of one child who's hoping to make it out and is currently in a hospital that's running out of fuel. Well, for more on this story and further coverage of the Israel-Gaza war, just visit the BBC News app. You can also go to the website for further updates. Now to Afghanistan, where the Taliban say that 315 people have now died in devastating flash floods in the north of the country. A spokesperson for the Interior Ministry told the BBC that most of the casualties were in the province of Baghlan. Emergency teams have been sent to rescue those stranded by the floodwaters. On Friday, a massive torrent of water swept away hundreds of houses in several villages. Dozens of people are still missing. Our South Asia editor Ambarasan Etherajan has more. Spectacular images and I completely miss them. As always, thanks very much for watching BBC News. I'm Kasia Madeira. Bye-bye. This is BBC News. The headlines. Israel has carried out fresh strikes on several parts of Gaza as it tells Palestinians to leave parts of the southern city of Rafah. The UK Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has been killed in Gaza. The UN says that more than 300 people have died in flooding in northern Afghanistan as relief efforts are stepped up. Voting's underway in Catalonia, where pro-independent supporters wanting to break away from Spain are hoping to maintain their majority in the regional parliament. It is Switzerland! And after one of the most controversial Eurovision song contests, Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. Hello, welcome to BBC News. I'm Kasia Madeira. We'll return to the Middle East, where Israel has launched further airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. These are the live images coming to us from the Israel-Gaza border. Palestinian officials say that two doctors were killed in the central city of Deir al-Bala, and more than 30 civilian deaths were reported on Saturday. All this comes as the UN chief, Antonio Guterres, has repeated his calls for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and the conditional release of all hostages. Well, with all those uh, sunny images of the beach, I think we need to find a full weather report. Here's Simon King. Live from London, this is BBC News. Israel's carried out fresh strikes on several parts of Gaza as it tells Palestinians to leave part of the southern city of Rafah. The Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has been killed in Gaza. The UN says more than 300 people have died in flooding in northern Afghanistan as relief efforts are stepped up. Voting's underway in Catalonia, where pro-independent supporters wanting to break away from Spain are hoping to maintain their majority in the regional parliament. It is Switzerland! And after one of the most controversial Eurovision Song Contests, Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. Hello and welcome, I'm Kasia Madeira. Israel has continued its airstrikes on several parts of the Gaza Strip, even as it continues issuing controversial evacuation orders to Palestinians. The Israeli military said its troops had found many tunnels used by Hamas at the Rafah crossing into Egypt. 
Isabella Tsipirska, thank you very much for just uh, outlining the conditions of the, uh, your team are operating there across Gaza from ActionAid UK. Thank you very much. Well, there is much more on this story, further coverage of the Israel-Gaza war on our website. Also, you can just go to the BBC News app as well, where we are continuing those reports as... Israel intensifies its military operations in southern Gaza and those tens of thousands more Palestinians are leaving Rafa. Now to Afghanistan, where the Taliban say that 315 people have now died in devastating flash floods in the north of the country. A spokesperson for the Interior Ministry told the BBC that most of the casualties were in the province of Bakhlan. Emergency teams have been sent to rescue those stranded by the floodwaters. On Friday, a massive torrent of water swept away hundreds of houses in several villages. Dozens of people are still missing. Well, our South Asia editor and Barasan Etharajan has more. Guy Hedgeco reporting there from Madrid. He'll, of course, keep us up to date when those results start coming in. Now let's cross over to get all the sports news. Chetan Patak joins us. And Chetan, a lot of excitement about the women's FA Cup final. Uh, there is Kasha, and we'll talk about that in a moment because we are going to get first-time winners, of course, either Manchester United or Tottenham. Uh, one game in the English Premier League on Sunday. It's one Arsenal have got to win if they're to go. And you can follow that Women's FA Cup final later on Sunday there too. We'll have more for you later, but that, Kasha, is all your sport for now. Chatton, as always, thank you very much. Yes, completely sold out that FA Cup final. Now let's turn to the Eurovision Song Contest final because pro-Palestinian protesters clashed with police over Israel's participation. And the Israeli entrant Eden Golan was booed at the Malmo Arena in Sweden. The build-up to the show also saw the Dutch entry disqualified for a backstage incident. But ultimately, Switzerland were crowned the winners of this year's competition, one of the most controversial song contests of recent times. Scott Bryan is a TV critic and broadcaster, and I asked him, has there ever been such a controversial and politicised Eurovision before? Now, the newly released body camera footage shows the shock and the confusion among police officers as they watch the collapse of a major bridge in the US city of Baltimore. Like there is no bridge. Like there is no bridge. The 1.6 mile long Francis Scott Key Bridge fell into the river after being hit by a container ship in March. Six construction workers who were repairing potholes on it at the time were killed in the incident. As always, lots more on our website from me and the team. Thanks for watching. This is BBC News. Our main headlines. Israel has carried out fresh strikes on several parts of Gaza as it tells Palestinians to leave parts of the southern city of Rafa. That comes as Britain says restricting arms supplies to Israel would not be a wise move and would only play into Hamas's hands. Meanwhile, the UK Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British Israeli hostage Nadav Popperwell has been killed in Gaza. Relief workers are struggling to deliver aid to those hit hard by devastating flash floods in northern Afghanistan. The UN says more than 300 people have died and thousands more have been injured after rivers of water and mud swept away houses. It is Switzerland! And after one of the most controversial Eurovision Song Contests, Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. I'm back at the top of the hour, but now here on BBC News, it's time for Unspun World with John Simpson. Hello and welcome to our new season. What's Benjamin Netanyahu planning in Gaza now? And why? Netanyahu would say the only way to have peace is for Israel to have security. The only way for Israel to have security is for the Palestinians to be kept on a very tight rein. More than a touch of gloom in Ukraine, 
as its people face some unpalatable realities. By military means, Ukraine is not able to retake all territories, including the Crimea. And 30 years after the glory days of Nelson Mandela's arrival in power, South Africa marks the anniversary with disillusion and anger. The poor, disenfranchised black majority that suffered uh, during apartheid expected that there also would have been economic freedom to follow um, political freedom. Hamas and the Israeli government are engaged in a complex duel at present. Well, that's it from the new summer season of Unspun World. It's good to be back. So from the Unspun team and from me, goodbye until we meet again. Live from London, this is BBC News. Israel carries out fresh strikes on parts of Gaza as it tells Palestinians to leave the southern city of Rafah. Meanwhile, the UK Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British-Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has been killed in Gaza. More than 300 have died following devastating flash floods in northern Afghanistan. Relief workers struggle to deliver aid. Voting's underway in Catalonia, where pro-independence supporters wanting to break away from Spain are hoping to maintain their majority in the regional elections. It is Switzerland! And after one of the most controversial Eurovision song contests, Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. Hello, welcome. I'm Kasia Madeira. Israel has continued its airstrikes on several parts of the Gaza Strip, even as it continues issuing controversial evacuation orders to Palestinians. The Israeli military said its troops had found many tunnels used by Hamas at the Rafah crossing into Egypt. The Israel Defense Forces have declared a narrow coastal strip at Al Mawasi to be a safe humanitarian zone. But the UN says that it has no running water or proper sanitation. Israel says that since Monday, about 300,000 Palestinians have already fled Rafah. The UN, US is still urging Israel not to mount a full-scale assault on the city. Now we're going to take you to Ukraine, where more than 4,000 people have been evacuated from the Kharkiv region. President Zelensky says the country's troops are conducting counterattacks for a second day, but he's admitted defensive operations are also continuing given ongoing Russian advances. He says that elsewhere, in the eastern Donetsk region, the situation was extremely difficult. Lithuanians vote in presidential elections today, with the main candidates all agreed that defence spending should be boosted amid fears about Russia's intentions in the region. Some in the small, mainly Catholic Baltic state on NATO's eastern flank fear that they could be next in Moscow's sights after Ukraine. Thousands of Canadians have been ordered to leave their homes at Fort Nelson in the province of British Columbia, which is under threat from a wildfire. The blaze began on Friday and was described by officials as exhibiting extreme fire behaviour. Wildfires have also led to evacuation alerts in the neighbouring province of Alberta. Voting is underway in Catalonia, where pro-independence supporters wanting to break away from Spain are hoping to maintain their majority in the regional parliament. 
Catalonia made a failed attempt to break away from Spain in 2017, and the election comes as the parliament in Madrid is expected to approve a controversial amnesty law for separatist Catalans facing legal action. Well, our correspondent Guy Hedgeco is in Madrid. And, oh, well, we, we will think he did very, very well. Just in terms of... Absolutely. Then... <laughs> no, good for him. Well, uh, absolutely. So, so in terms of what happens next year, I guess, uh, briefly, when it comes to Switzerland, how are they going to have, how, how are they going to contend with what we saw just now? Well, I think the EBU has to sit down with someone who understands brand management and say, what is our brand and how do we protect it? And that might mean saying to certain countries, sorry, you're too politically contentious. We can't have you in the contest this year. OK, well, because, Chris West, it protects the brand. Chris West, looking at the brands, uh, thank you for sharing your uh, insights into the Eurovision Song Contest. Hello, welcome. You're watching BBC News. Our main headlines this hour. Israel tells tens of thousands more Palestinians to leave Rafa as it intensifies military operations in southern Gaza, carrying out fresh strikes. Meanwhile, the UK Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that the British Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has been killed in Gaza. Relief workers are struggling to deliver aid to those hard hit by devastating flash floods in northern Afghanistan. The UN says more than 300 people have died and thousands more have been injured. It is... And after one of the most controversial Eurovision song contests, Switzerland have been crowned as this year's winners. Hello and welcome to BBC News. I'm Kasia Madeira. We're going to return to the Middle East, where Israel has launched further airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. These are just some of the live images that are coming into the BBC from the Israel-Gaza border. Palestinian officials are saying that two doctors have been killed in the central city of Deir al-Bala and more than 30 civilian deaths have been reported on Saturday. And we understand that Israel has been dropping flyers from the air and also posting on social media, telling residents in the city's eastern districts to go to Al Mawasi, which is a, a narrow coastal area, which Israel has called an expanded humanitarian zone. But uh, some concerns about the ability to hold so many people there are being expressed by the United Nations. The UN chief, Antonio Guterres, is repeating calls for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and unconditional release of all of the hostages. As always, lots more on our website. I'll be back at the top of the hour, so do stay with us here on BBC News. But now it is time to have a look at what the weather is doing. Here's Tomasz Szafanaka. Live from London, this is BBC News. Israel carries out fresh strikes on parts of Gaza as it tells Palestinians to leave the southern city of Rafa. Meanwhile, the UK Foreign Office is investigating a Hamas claim that British Israeli hostage Nadav Popelwell has been killed in Gaza. It is 
After one of the most controversial Eurovision Song Contests, Switzerland are crowned this year's winners. Hello and welcome, I'm Kasia Madeira. Israel has told tens of thousands more Palestinians to leave Rafa and go to Al Mawasi, a narrow coastal area which Israel calls an expanded humanitarian zone. It comes as the Palestinian Health Ministry says that eight people have been killed after houses in the central area of the Gaza Strip were hit. Israel has also sent tanks north of there just after a heavy night of aerial and ground bombardments. Well, from Jerusalem, Paul Adams has this report. Our political correspondent there, Nick Erdley. Now it's time to look at some of the sports news. Gavin Ramjan joins us. And Gavin, a lot of excitement on the Women's FA Cup final. Thanks very much indeed, Kasia. We'll start with the uh, English Premier League game today, though. You are absolutely right about the Women's FA Cup final, but it's uh, one that Arsenal have to win in the Premier League today if they're to go back to the top of the table. A huge win for her there. That is all the sport from us for now, Kasia. We'll be back with more later on. We'll see you then. Gavin, looking forward to it. Thanks very much. Now, Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan, are in Lagos as part of their three-day visit to Nigeria. They're there to promote the upcoming Invictus Games, and one of their engagements today has seen the Duke and Duchess of Sussex join a basketball clinic. So let's cross over to Lagos to speak to our Africa correspondent, Simi Jola Oso, who joins us live. So what have they been up to today? On our website, we've got some of the uh, big images of the night, so do check that out. Now, newly released body camera footage shows the shock and the confusion among police officers as they watch the collapse of a major bridge in the U.S. city of Baltimore. Like there is no bridge. Like there is no bridge. The 1.6 mile long Francis Scott Key Bridge fell into the river after being hit by a container ship in March. Six construction workers who were repairing potholes on it at the time were killed in the incident. So just some of the uh, video and the audio showing the shock and the confusion of police officers at the time. I'm Kasia Madeira. You've been watching BBC News. Bye bye. Hello. The skies may look a little threatening where you are today, 